gentlemen, Walter presents That's No Lady, That's Darcel, Devine, and Company. Ladies and gentlemen, the Corte Ballet at Darcel 15. Welcome, please, Lindsay Alexander. <laughs> Lady Elaine, ladies and gentlemen, Lady Elaine. <laughs> Laurel Andrews, Laurel Andrews. <laughs> T and Tina Sandell, what's not to love? Tina Sandell. <laughs> and the choreographer of our show, ladies and gentlemen, Roxy, uh, Roxy. <laughs> There they are, ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause. Well, this is a treat for me. Thank you. This is a treat for me because now I have, now I have Darcel and company on stage. And we have been running our television show now on cable for about 26, 36 weeks. And we haven't had Darcel and company. And these are the folks that, that make Darcel look good four nights a week and on the road and traveling to San Francisco. Um, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, in this business, don't depend on a one-man show because it doesn't work. <laughs> this show works because we have five very talented folks tap dancing and carrying on. Well, sometimes tap dancing <laughs> and most of the time carrying on. Is that the way it works? All time tappers. I think I should start with probably our newest member of Darcel and Company. Um, Lindsay Alexander, hi. Hi. How are you? Wonderful. You look good tonight. Thank you. Thank you for learning from you. <laughs> yeah. Well, aren't you sweet? Been in the show about three weeks now and already knows how to take care of the bus. All right. <laughs> this is not a problem. Lindsay, when did you start uh, uh, female impersonation? When did you start uh, doing show business? Um, about five years ago in Austin, Texas. I in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Is that the pickup truck group <laughs> down there? <laughs> Plenty of pickup trucks. I sure. did it on a dare for a, what they called um, amateur night, and which I later found out that you nickname Picture Future. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you telling us that you were lovely that evening? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, Lindsay, that, that you're not alone because there's not anybody in this, uh, on this panel, on this show, that doesn't have some pictures at the beginning. And <laughs> things were pretty grotesque. And <laughs> thank, thank goodness they picked up. We could get into that. Uh, Lady Lane uh, is uh, another new member of our show. And Lady Lane, you're from Portland? I'm from Texas. You're also from Texas? Oh, that, yeah. You didn't know that? No, well, where in Texas, Rock, Lady Rock, Lane? Rock, Texas. Uh, it's near the Gulf of Mexico, the foot of Louisiana. Yeah, well, I, yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm here now. We've <laughs> been to Portland how long? I've been to Portland since I was 11. I'm oh, well, then you weren't exactly. dressing like this in... in no. <laughs> well, well you, yes, I did. I my mother went to the high heels. Yes, I did, I did. My mother went to the hospital, she came home, I did football, someone was a little popular, and I got one of her wigs and one of her dresses, and stuff like that. And you were Flip Wilson and for a while. I was Flip Wilson. Uh, you mentioned that you were 11 years old and did this when Flip Wilson was around? No, I was. I was younger then, but when we moved here... Uh, that's a point I'm trying to get away from. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Laurel, um, you're from Denver, Colorado. Yes, I am. And you've been in our show for what? I'm in my 10th tenth... Oh, oh no, 10 years. years. Well, that, I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Laurel also is our... Uh, uh, Contest coordinator for Femme Magnifique, oh, that's fine. which is becoming almost a full-time <laughs> profession for both of us. Yes. But uh, you started in the business. I'm um, in Denver, Colorado, and I had a, a fabulous first night out, and then from then it went downhill. Uh, my first night out, I was done professionally by a lady who was going to a large masquerade ball, and she wanted something different, so she was going to go as uh, Rhett Butler from Gone with the Wind, and she wanted a Scarlett O'Hara. And so she, uh, who was a makeup artist, she did me up as Scarlett O'Hara, and I went and looked mint, looked wonderful, and then uh, the next time I tried it again, on, on my own, we won't talk about it. <laughs> it was, like says, um, very humble beginnings. Very humble beginnings. All go through the, the, the makeup at this point, uh, under the lights and, and all that, is, is great. And, uh, I mean, they are beautiful. It's just, I mean, they're beautiful. <laughs> really. But you get to that point, there's no books anywhere, is there? No, no, yeah. No, no. I didn't see one book that said, uh, well, Darcel, what you're going to do is put on these silver things on your eyelashes, <laughs> you know, eyebrows, pardon me. Uh, Tina Sandell and... Uh, Tia Sandel and I started in the business. No, you were before I was. Yes, you were much way. older. This yes, is my yes, older yes, sister. Yes, Mexican mom. Yes, yes. Mexican mom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Dean when I met you, you were working at a club called the Magic Garden. There's a club Northwest. Club Northwest. Club Northwest, yes. 
And um, I, the way I got started was I came to Portland and I never wanted to dress well. I was never wanted to dress before. From where? From Thomas Falls, Oregon. You I, didn't wear a dress in Thomas Falls? No, 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 no. Well, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I did. I came to Portland and they had a show at the Club Northwest. And I went over there and they had an amateur show. So Jimmy Lynn and Jan London, who were working there then, had an amateur show. So I went in one night and I just turned 21. Went in there and I saw the show and I went back the following weekend and put on a dress and I had no lashes, put on some blue eyeshadow, just, you know, a little pink lipstick. And Your own hair. My own hair, of my own hair, which is about, oh, oh, right there. And I matted it up and I had on these little from fucking pumps. Oh, 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 here's me. Oh, excuse me. Take care of okay, I had these little pumps on. These nerd shoes. I'm so sorry. Well, here we go. That's right. Tell them what I am. And um, I went over to show over there and they said that oh, we like to choose. So I went over there and they said, well, come back and do it every week with us. So I did. And they had shows like on the weekends. So I went over there and it was the only show bar in town that had female impersonators. And I had the bar here. You had the bar here, yes. And, and uh, it was a tavern there. Yep. Uh -huh. and, and the law changed so that we could have entertainment in taverns. So at that point, Roxy comes into the picture. Hello, Roxy. Hello, uh, Garcia. Oh, hi. Roxy is. Go ahead, that's fine. Roxy choreographs our show, choreographs our show now, and choreographs with them and help put it together. Uh, Roxy, your beginnings in show business. Well, my first beginnings were the art show business, and I truly did not put, uh, I take it back, I was going to say I didn't put a dress on until I got here in Portland, Oregon. But I, I did, I slipped into my mother's dress once at Halloween, <laughs> and I won a Halloween contest in Halloween when I was about 15 or 16 years old. Uh, but my early beginnings were in Las Vegas. Uh, I've always wanted to be a dancer since the time I was uh, six years old. Uh, the, my parents also said, you're going to go out of that, you're not going to change. All I wanted to do was ever be an entertainer. Well, 2,000 years later, that's still all I ever wanted to be, <laughs> is an entertainer. So, but I started dance schools in Salt Lake City. Uh, I studied dancing in Pocatello, Idaho. I grew up in West Yellowstone, Montana. And from uh, Salt Lake City to Las Vegas, where I got a job as a horse boy in the beginning. And I like to always say, I always thought I was going to be Fred Astaire all these years, and I never realized I was going to turn out to be Ginger Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me share with you. Oh, and, and so that was, now, now we're going to tell, that was 19 years ago. The three of us have been tap dancing together for 19 years, and I, I'm excited by that one, too. And, and you'll be here in 19 more, and we'll have one. <laughs> let me share something with Roxy joined the show. Uh, remember this, Tina? And Roxy joined the show, and it was like, um, um, he would, had been dancing at the Hoyt Hotel with Gracie Hansen. So here was this. Virile, wonderful, heavy, great dancer. Oh, me, I don't mean heavy weight, I mean heavy. Just nice doing all these wonderful Adagio things and heavy going over time. Came to join our show, and the first night, danced on stage in male attire, without the face, without the makeup, and the audience went, <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Whoops. So the next night, I thought, well, I'll do something a little different. So we did it. Roxy did another little tap dance routine, which was even more masculine and more together, and the audience went, so, the third night, Roxy said, where's a dress? Yes, that's <laughs> and that's how Roxy started our show in a dress, and it was an instant success yeah. on the night because... We I want to add, I did the same tap dance yeah, and the yeah. same music, uh, only in a dress and a painted face, and it was an instant success. That's but right. I did make it as a male. That's so right. I, <laughs> people came to our self at Old Town to see the impersonators do their thing. And production work, uh, uh, we all love the production work because mm -hmm. we all get a chance to work together and, and, and uh, do structured... Uh, production work, yeah. and, and it's really more disciplined and more together, and harder to do than your single numbers. Yeah. And it takes a lot more discipline to do the production numbers, uh, very much so, because all of a sudden, when you're single, you can go out there, and if you make a mistake, nobody knows it but you, and so you have your own face on the line. However, in a production number, everyone is supposed to look uniform, you're all doing the same steps, and you're working together as one unit, with any luck at all, <laughs> and oh, when you goof up, and your mental concentration isn't quite there, and you goof up, all of a sudden, everybody else, oh, look, that one goof, oh, look, that's that one goof. And you've got to really stay together when you're in a production number to make it all happen. Oh, truly. But one thing I've learned about working here, even though you do make a mistake in production number, you never let your audience know. You always go on within the number. I've learned that. I mean, I've, I've gone downstairs and I have made mistakes on stage. I started laughing. You know, I, I put through all the character. I go downstairs and Ross and I said, Tina, mm -hmm. you know you are more professional than that. You make a mistake. You don't let the audience know. You just keep my right on to the next My step. favorite thing to do with a mistake is make it look like they're the ones making ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 woke up in production number and I'm in the wrong place and I will just look like I am so right and they just they will laugh at me and so they look like they've done wrong. And oh, that's great. That. That's my secret of mine. A bigger smile when you make the yeah. mistake is the answer. Yeah, exactly. A bigger smile. It's like what is it the little kid in the band and he's all a step in the whole band and the mother says look he's the one in step. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well the very first dance teacher I ever had said that if you fall down on stage it doesn't matter. The important thing that matters is that you point your toe when you fall and you smile as you fall. As you fall. <laughs> we have the same thing with costumes because we do uh, extremely large headdresses and, and uh, backpacks and this sort of thing in, our, in our, some of our production work. 
And if it, if it falls, it falls. Yeah. If it falls, leave it there. It's a rule of thumb. And uh, every, nobody cares about it going to the floor. Uh, we get to travel a lot and have a wonderful time. We've traveled and worked in... Uh, Oh my goodness, you name it. Oh, name tell it. me. Uh, Las, Las Vegas, Vegas, Las Vegas, Vegas, Vegas Reno, Reno yeah. uh, Seattle, California, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco. So we just said San Francisco, Flamethal, Seattle, 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 what do you think is going to happen? Where are you going in the, in the business? Where do you think you're going in the business? I don't know. To the top? Hopefully up. Yeah. To, to, to the top. Yeah. I think there's room. Uh, we know professional people that work all over the United States, and I think there's a lot of room. There's a lot going on for what we do. People well, one of the things that's happened now is that they've exploited almost every phase of uh, show business. And we, this media, is really the last one that has yet to really super be explored and super be over-exploited. So I really feel the timing is right now that there's only one place to go, and that's more exposure, more uh, more uh, open publicity. And uh, Did we have people, did you have people... When they found out when they, they found out what kind of work you do, did, did you have people after after Tootsie? Did you have people say compare you to Tootsie? Oh, God, or? Yes. All the time. <laughs> all yes. the time. Well, one of the neat things about uh, Tootsie was that all of a sudden people, for the first time in general, saw a man posing and running around like a female. Not very good. But not, that, not that pretty in my head. Not that pretty. But uh, but it was done. And before that, I think. People always thought of uh, female impersonation, I think, as somewhat on the sleazy, on the uh, dark side of life. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly what they did think, but it seemed to have that connotation, and we've tried to keep it uh, above that. And it never really has been. Uh, that could get us into the whole history of female impersonation. It goes way back thousands and thousands of years ago. And what people don't realize, or they have forgotten or don't know, is that the original Shakespeare's, all of Shakespeare's plays were all males who did female roles, because it was very improper and very naughty for a lady to appear in public and to display herself in public. On stage. So on a stage. So when Shakespeare wrote his plays, the very first Juliet was a man. Oh, I wouldn't play Juliet. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Shakespeare himself at one point, and it was, I forgot which one of those kings, King Lear or one of the kings, but anyway, they were going to play, uh, play they had written the, the play for the king. And the, uh, the man who was to play, the king's mother, uh, died that uh, very night that they would open the play for the king, and Shakespeare himself jumped in and took over the part and played the female role that night. Also, there's, of course, kabuki. The Japanese theater has a tradition, and still, traditionally today, is kabuki, which, in fact, all, uh, all female roles are taken by men. And they're also, and they're, uh, um, their uh, performers are absolutely, I mean, they're top, the, you know, respected and top. They're called national treasures. We have, we have people, uh, you, you know, when you touched on the sleazy part, we had people, we had people come in and say, oh, I don't know what we're going to see. I don't know what they expect. I don't know what they what in their minds think of. But I want to get into the costuming, because, as you see, what happened to your costume, Laurel? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show the beading off. You have to show the beading off. These costumes, costumes are, are uh, created right here at Barcel 15 by the folks in the show. We make all of all the things you see. We do make uh, our own wardrobe and all production wardrobes mm -hmm. made here. And uh, uh, I, I often have women say, oh, would you make us something like that? Or where do you get your costumes? And I have to tell them we don't them from Kmart. I really don't no. think that Kmart is no. <laughs> But the thing is, women will ask me, and I'm sure they've asked you folks too, mm -hmm. about, oh, God, I'd love to be able to wear those earrings, or I'd love to be able to wear that kind of a look. Wear it. Yes, Isn't that what you tell the ladies? Wouldn't you tell her? Yeah. All the time. They're always, saying, they're always saying, oh, I wish I could look like you or dress like you. You know, makeup is lost art to the American, the American woman. And they're always saying, well, my boyfriend doesn't want me to wear any makeup. They're lying. Because when Morgan Fairchild comes on that television screen, they are paying attention to that woman. And she has painted up from here till Christmas. And so a little bit of makeup. Oh, I agree with you. I think men you know, don't want other men to look, look at their wives girls. or their girlfriends. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But they, sure. they should notice the painted up girls on television and, and here. And here. <laughs> and here. <laughs> and here. <laughs> Why, just we pinch our cheeks and hit the stage. <laughs> now that works. <laughs> it's just a second. You're ready. Liar, liar. That's a fire. The, uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, we've touched on costuming, we've touched on how, I still want to know about going on with, with um, uh, I know what I want, I, I want to write a book. Okay, right, you right. know, I want to write a book about all Which is the, things, the neat thing about being a female person, working here is that you don't, not only do you learn to go on stage, you learn other ways to make a living, as well as making costumes, which you can break out into, uh, makeup, which you can break out into, um, stunning hair, you learn all these other... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
No, yes, it is beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm sat my hair. I know. Uh, uh, but you, you learn the hand grenade. Yes, hand grenade. Spread it. No, but you learn other things. I mean, I've learned other things um, since I was at the Magic Gardens at the Club Northwest. I've learned by coming here and seeing other performers put on their makeup, do their hair. Um, um, performing on stage, I've learned a stage presence, what I would not have learned over there. I've learned it here, I've learned how to be more professional, and how to... How about uh, how to build a stage? I, well, I, yeah, have, I, started I, started I started too, yes. What was it again? Too. And um, I've learned a lot of things. I learned um, about... Um, Darcel just taught me the tech, the tech of the lighting and the sound, and how things have to be perfect in, in order for the audience to enjoy it, and for them to... We have to relate to our audience. Because That's audiences people. don't realize why they go to a show, and they see a show, and they go away saying, it wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be, but they don't realize that probably it wasn't the performance so much as maybe the tech was a little bit off. Yeah. And we depend on, we depend on certainly on audio. Oh. I mean, yes. we depend on audio completely because most of our things that we do are mine mm -hmm. or the music is, is in the can, as it were. And so we are we are depending on that. We depend on our tech people, our lighting people, so that they make us look wonderful. Yes. Yes. And they do a good job. We can talk them down. They're all here. They're all here. Uh, we have uh, another company on Monday and Tuesday night, Catch a Rising Star. In fact, you were in Catch a Rising yes. Star and still performing yes. in Catch a Rising Star. And Tina does, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, does some of the emceeing on yeah. Monday and Tuesday nights, and we work Wednesday through Saturday night. Uh, is there anything you haven't touched upon? Because I don't want to leave this because I'm not going to let you back on my show. <laughs> 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 well, I think one of the things that you are interesting, uh, um, yeah. you see, the, you see the, the, the people in front of you that we have created, and it's um, we don't talk about, like, Kurt or Laurel, but Kurt really has created Laurel Andrews from the ground up. And when we go and we, people are always asking, where do you get your um, ideas for your numbers and your wardrobe and things? After a while, I know what Laurel would wear. I know what, what would look best. I know what is not right stage-wise for Laurel. And it's something that um, you just develop a sense of over, the, over a few years when you're building up who you want to present to the audience. You know, and that's, that's really, it's really different for every person because um, Peacock and I are two totally different types of entertainers. Um, not to say that she couldn't, but she would not really do the type of things that I do, and vice versa. I would do Barbara Streisand, and you would do Lena Hart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes maybe it's sometimes. interesting. I, I mean, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Movie. And so, and so everybody, everybody in the show, since we really don't um, spread into each other's character territory, that's what makes our show very interesting, because we are not a Marilyn Monroe, a Barbara Streisand, a Diana Ross. We use all of the voices, but we make them our own. And so I think that's one of the things that makes our show a lot more exciting yeah, than, than a museum yeah. show, yeah. where you yeah. just go and see an that copy of a movie right. star. Which is what I'd like to point out right now too is that what we do is strictly a caricature and is an act what we do, that this is, the, what we do is theatrics and that what we perform and the look that you see uh, us do is strictly an act and it's for us that we've created, each one of us have created our own individual characters, but it is strictly an act and that we all know that when the lights go out and the people go away, we put on our dirty old blue jeans and our dirty old sneakers. socks and sneakers and take off the hair and we're right back to being the same dumpy boys that we were before. <laughs> well, I'm just I guess speak to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I myself. Well, I mask all the time. I mask all the time to ourselves. You dress like this all the time. I, it's it's uncomfortable. You don't think we don't look. We no. might look comfortable to you folks in the audience tonight oh. and out there in television land. But this is not comfortable. And I understand the most why. Oh, look at her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say vanity kills. Mm -hmm. Well, I, nice beauty, right? I always say that you, if you're comfortable, then you don't have enough on. You should start That's again. Right. And that's you know, you can be uncomfortable from the beginning. The worst part of all this for me is shaving. I hate shaving. But four nights a week, I, I have to. I can't even pass a night <laughs> without shaving. It's, you know, that's the, the most uncomfortable. Your face? Yes, my face. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I say my chest. But it is hard. Now, uh, audience, look. look at, this is Lady Elaine. What, what, uh, could, do you think it looks, looks like she would shave anything but maybe some private parts or something? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean what I'm saying is you look yeah. extremely, extremely feminine and beautiful, right? Is that right? Yeah. Not that we don't all. Yeah. Look at this. I'm getting that look. <laughs> Each and every one of right? Each and every one. Each and every one. Oh, that is white. Oh, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. <laughs> <laughs> anybody. anybody can buy a white dress. <laughs> the thing I have to say is about working with the company that we've worked with for so long. The, good, the nice thing about working with the kids, that I, all the people that I work with, is that not every day is a good day for us. And we all walk in here, and we go downstairs, we may have a bad day. But each performer that I work with, and I'm saying it because I've worked here for like, say 19 years, I've had a lot of bad days and bad nights where I come in, and the kids downstairs knew it, and they'd say, automatically go, all right. You know, we got to cheer Tina because she's got to go on stage and she can't go on stage with attitude. So we all 
Come downstairs sometimes in bad moods, we therefore cheer each other up. And that's the one good thing we all care about one another downstairs. And we care about our performances out here on the stage. That's exactly, that's exactly where it comes from. But where that comes from is, is uh, that wouldn't have happened a few years ago. Yeah. And that doesn't happen with a lot of unprofessional people. When you're a professional person, our audiences don't care that we have had a bad day. Our audiences only want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And that's our job to entertain them. And if we've had a bad time, or uh, our rent is due, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, their rent's due too. But they don't want to hear about yeah, our rent being due. Exactly. They want to have a good time. And they come to be enjoy to enjoy a professional, well put together show, right. and thanks to, thanks to our uh, cast here, uh, they're always thinking. We rehearse every Tuesday afternoon, rain or shine. If we have nothing to rehearse, we rehearse anyway, because it's discipline, and it's the discipline that we need to make it happen. And I'm really proud and happy to work with the five people that I work with, and. And we are so much fun when we go on the road. <laughs> they call us a rock group, ladies and gentlemen. Now, they see the costumes of the first hanging out the back of the van, and they call us a rock group. And when we go into a service station, and we pile out and have to pump our own gas because we're in California, it's no fun. <laughs> because usually we have parts of our pieces on because we're going to run and do a show very quickly. So we have nails on, sometimes some eyelashes are still hanging, some <laughs> rollers are still on. We are a trip when we travel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so if you see a brown van going down the street someday with feathers hanging up the window, just look and say, that must be Darcel and company on their way to Never Never Land one more time. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, one of the first things we do at Darcel 15 is we learn to laugh at ourselves, and then we can laugh at everybody else. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I see all the red lights in the world on. Are we still on camera? They're trying to delete Tina's comfy shoes. My chair started to collapse halfway through. That way you're hanging on me. Look at my chair. I got a waffle cream. Look, look, look. I just knew halfway through I was going to go crashing. Damn. <laughs>